What is going on ladies and gentlemen, AJ Good here at the House of Masks and as you can see behind me we have a .5 Cori display and that is because recently I finished my .5 Cori V1 mask set. So now I have every version that he used for the .5 era and note the keywords in there, version one, we are not counting this version two that was sculpted separately and used way later in the .5 era, although I do have it clearly along with the other portions that go onto this mask. I'm only focused on these .5 V1s, so the first version that he wore. I'm going to be taking you guys through and showing you all of these masks up close and letting you know when they were worn and just kind of showing them off as a set. But before we get into all that, I did want to go over the question that was asked in the last video and that was if you could eradicate one mask from Slipknot's history, what mask would it be? Once again, we had a shit storm of answers. There was all kinds of stuff, some stuff that I definitely expected and then some stuff that made me scratch my head. For me, it's pretty hard, so I think I'm going to give you guys my top three and I didn't even think about this question. I'm just doing this right here on the spot. The All Hope is Gone Leather Clown, really cannot stand that fucking mask. I don't know what it is about it, but I just do not like it. I get really burnt out on the whole not changing your mask thing, so I think that uh, when Mick decided to go with his volume three and just really didn't change it from that point on, I was annoyed. The All Hope is Gone Cory was used for a really long time, and while I've learned to appreciate the mask, that was definitely one of my most hated masks at first. Craig's masks, ever since uh, he stopped using the volume three one, which was probably his last cool mask, are pretty obnoxious. Uh, V-Man's mask is ugly. That's more than Three, but yeah, those ones are all fucking terrible. I just don't like them at all. If I had to get rid of one of those, I would just hang some pictures on the wall and throw a fucking dart at one, and that would be the one that would go. <laughs> One last thing before we dive into this set, I did want to thank my patrons. Thank you guys to everybody that has signed up so far, and I'm going to give a shout out to a couple of my high tier patrons, such as Hayden Browning, Charles McSwain, Shawners Todd, Nightshade, Daphne Lavoy, Henry Sanchez, and Scott Fitzsimmons. You guys are all $50 pledgers, and that is fucking fantastic, and you're all entered in the .5 Clown giveaway, which ends on the last day of November. So November 30th, I believe is when we are going to be ending that, and two of you guys are getting a .5 clown mask. It is not too late to sign up if you guys would like to be involved in that giveaway. It is a patron exclusive, so it's only for patrons. And what that means is you would have to go to patreon.com, which will be linked in the description, sign up, become a $50 patron, because it is a $50 exclusive giveaway. So not only are you entered in the giveaway, but you're also receiving all of the rewards that the $50 patrons get, such as a monthly goodie bag, early access to my videos, exclusive access to live streams, and you get to join a secret Facebook group. There's some other stuff in that tier, but to be honest, they get so much stuff that I don't even remember all of it, so it's a pretty good deal. Not only do you get all of that cool shit, but you're also entered in any giveaway that I do on Patreon. Now, for the moment that you guys have all been waiting for. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. Preparing the Krabby Patty! I don't even care if my video gets demonetized for that because of a copyright claim. I fucking love Spongebob memes, so... We are going to talk about this set. So the first version that we have here is going to be the promo .5 Cory, the lip version, whatever you want to call it. This was used for all of the promotional stuff, so you'll see group shots before J and V-Man were added in, and then some shots with J and V-Man. This was also used on night one of Knotfest, and Corey realized that it fucking sucked to sing in, so they went ahead and cut the lips out. But before that, we did get to see it in The Devil and I and some promo stuff. But all in all, it really wasn't used too long because Corey realized that it was hard to sing in, so they ended up cutting the lips off, and then we got the lipless version. So this is the version that had the cutout lips, and probably the one that you saw the most of before he started adding the face paint stuff. So the lipless version made its debut on Knotfest night two. Somebody trimmed Corey's mask up for him so that he could sing a little bit better, and there was definitely 
definitely an improvement. I don't know if you guys remember watching those live streams, but he immediately sounded better once he got those lips off of there. So moving on to one of my favorite versions, we have the tribal face paint version. And I'm going to be honest, I have no fucking idea when that one was used. I think it was Helsinki, but I don't want you guys to quote me on that because I honestly do not know. It's been so long since I saved the photos of that version that I cannot remember when it was used but I believe it was Helsinki. This one immediately became my favorite. It just reminded me of old school Slipknot because back in the day, they were always doing some sort of weird shit with face paint or whatever. I just really dig that vibe. And while the mask itself doesn't feel super Slipknot to me, doing little stuff like cutting the mouth out, adding face paint and stuff like that definitely brings back the old school vibe and I dig it. Moving right along, we have the Ghost Panda version. This one doesn't really have a name, so I've just always called it the Ghost Panda. You guys can call it whatever the fuck you want, but I'm just gonna call it the Ghost Panda because he whited the face out and added some black around the eyes and it just gave it that kind of panda pledge of allegiance Corey from Iowa look but it was very ghostly and translucent all of the lines were very very soft and it just kind of looked like the base paint faded into the mask which was cool I definitely dig it it's a ghastly look I believe that this was used in Belfast in 2016, although I could be wrong about that as well. Definitely one of my favorite looks for this mask. It's just ghostly and eerie and spooky, and I like it. That leads us into our next one, and I have no idea if these are in order. I, I don't know which order these actually go in, but if I had to guess, it would be this order because it kind of looked like each face paint followed the next. And that moves us on to the Stockholm mask, which has been dubbed the Joker mask. As you guys know, Corey is obviously a fan of the Joker because he has a Joker tattoo. So when he did black around the eyes, white on the face, and then red lipstick, everybody just kind of dubbed it the Joker because Heath Ledger's Joker had smudgy red lips, blacked out eyes, and a white face. So we just assumed that he was giving his little nod to the Joker, which is rad. You don't often see nods to movies and stuff like that in Slipknot. I think the only other one that I can even think about is Sid's Transformers mask, which is weird on its own. At least this one's just a face paint and it's not based directly off of something. It is his mask with some paint on it that just happens to resemble the Joker. A blast but not least. Panda version. This one was super messy. It was just uh, kind of slopped together and he used this for an interview and a couple other shows. Gothenburg was definitely one of them, although I think he used it for a few shows. So I believe that was Gothenburg. So that is that. This is my 0.5 Corey set. Definitely stoked to have these all together. I don't think I've seen any other collectors that even had something close to this. So it feels good to see them all together. I don't know why I have such a personal connection to this mask. I think it's just the 0.5 era in general. You guys have probably heard me talk about that in other videos. I just feel like it brought back a lot of Slipknot to the band. It was super atmospheric, everything from the lighting that they used at the shows to the noises that they used as samples to the music itself. I dig a lot of what they did with that era. I dig the jumpsuits, a lot of the masks. I just feel like it is the first album to have atmosphere since Iowa. So there was a lot of saving grace for me on that record cycle and uh, Corey's mask just happens to fit in there. Corey has said a few times that he's going to be sending me a mask one day and a lot of people have asked me what mask I would like that to be, and I know that I should probably say the Ghost Glow, or an Iowa, or Volume 3, or whatever, but honestly, I really hope it's one of these guys. If it ever does happen, I would be super honored and stoked to have one of the real .5 Corys. I just have a big attachment to that record cycle. So right now I'm going to be showing these things off, giving you guys some nice theatrical looks at them. If you guys would like to see individual videos on the masks, just search 0.5 Corey mask on YouTube. They're bound to come up. I'm not gonna link every single one, but there are some paint tutorials, some time lapses, some regular unboxings, some stuff like that. So if you guys would like to check them out, make sure to go do so. You'll probably learn a little bit more about the masks in detail individually. That is going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and we will see you later.
Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. If you like all of my content, make sure to find me on all my social media platforms. If you really like the House of Masks, consider becoming a patron. All the links will be in the description below. If you dislike the video, or me in general, make sure to write up a detailed formal complaint and shove it right up your ass. Thanks!